Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader. I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review, recording this late Friday morning on May 24th. Ahead of the long holiday weekend, our offices will be closed, along with everyone else's, I hope, on Monday for Memorial Day. So we'll be back at it again on Tuesday. Hope you have a great weekend. And again, do me a favor, if you are watching this on YouTube, give us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe to our channel. It helps with the Google algorithm. Very much appreciated. Um, onto the market, we've had four straight constructive weeks before this one. I would say this one not as constructive, but not bad, just kind of more, a little bit of stalling out. Obviously Thursday after Nvidia's earnings, we had kind of some selling on strength and reversal. And we have seen, you know, I've talked about, we've seen more of a lack of selling pressure than some sort of buying panic. You know, it's not November, December where it's like just every little dip is bought. It's more like things are, most things are levitating higher. And there's a lot of indexes, stocks, sectors that quote unquote, only return to their old highs and are now hesitating. Now, the fact that they've come back to their old highs is a good thing, not a bad thing. You know, if they couldn't bounce, that would be bad. Um, so overall, still positive, but it's just kind of a day to day, week to week thing here. There's a lot of stocks that are acting well, but they're not powering ahead sort of thing. There's a lot of indexes that are still above moving averages. But, you know, again, they're sort of battling with old resistance. So overall positive, but just simply saying pick your spots, pick, pick your stocks carefully. I would say at this point, you probably know, we do have a lot of earnings the next couple of weeks for growth stocks, but you probably know which names are leaders or potential leaders, whereas which ones are kind of laggards, at least for this leg of the overall bull move, okay? Uh, in Capital Growth Investors Model Portfolio, we had a couple of, you know, holes in the boat, so to speak. So we trimmed back on a couple of stocks, but put that money to work basically in a new name. Um, so we're still about a quarter in cash, a little bit less, maybe 23% in cash. And if things kick into gear, because there's a lot of stocks that are right there, if we start to see some power, I could put that to work really quickly, and I hope I, I do. But really, like I said, it's just kind of a day by day, week by week thing and want to get pulled into the market through positive action and big volume and all, all the normal sort of things going forward. OK, so overall bullish, but again, just kind of not, you know, chasing strength and buying whatever is gapping up on earnings. We've seen a lot of sort of selling on strength and things kind of coming into support and moving averages first. OK, so let's hop on the charts. I'll show you what I'm talking about. As usual, I'm using a program called Market Surge. You can learn more. Uh, from Investors Business Daily and at the website marketsurge.com. Okay, so here's the NASDAQ and the big cap indexes. You can always get kind of in the weeds here, short term, but obviously long term trend is up. But even intermediate term, you know, reversal yesterday at 17,000. And who knows? I'm recording this, like I said, it's 1130 in the morning. Um, you know, maybe the NASDAQ reverses again today, that sort of thing. But overall, we're above this is the 25 and 50 day moving averages. There's some daylight there. Um, and that's to the good. The big cap indexes are definitely stronger. It's not just NVIDIA, but there is, you know, some of that where, you know, these things you can see the S&P 500 did move out to new highs and it's still holding new highs even with yesterday's reversal. When you do dig in, not even that deeply, though, when you just look at a broader array, it's not as, you know, it's it's good, but more proving to do. So this is small caps. Now, they've been lagging for a while, so I'm not going to key off. You can always find something that's lagging. I'm not going to key off small caps, but again, they never really got out to new highs. These are the uh, mid caps, never really got out to new highs and then pulled all the way back. You can see here right to the 50 day moving average. Um, the New York composite, which is a little bit broader, didn't really, I mean, it, it nosed out, but pretty much didn't get out to new highs back to the 50 day moving average. And then even if you look at things like just the unweighted uh, or equal weighted, I call it unweighted <clears throat> S&P 500, you know, the average S&P 500 stock did not get back to its old high. If you look at the same thing with the NASDAQ 100 equal weight, it's a little bit stronger, um, which I'll get to in a second. But again, still battling with those old highs. So you just see that a lot. It's not bearish. I'm not trying to make that sound bad. It's just kind of it is what it is at this point, that there's a lot of names and sectors that are good. The fact that we've done this is good. If we had just done this and been unable to bounce, that would be bad. Um, the fact that we've come back is good. The long term trend is up. You know, it's a bull market at the same time, near term. You know, the question is, is the correction definitively over and we just kite higher for another couple months? I'm all for it. Or do we need to kind of shake and bake, get some fear levels up? Uh, maybe we consolidate a little bit more and that this correction turns into sort of a little bit of a longer consolidation. OK, I'm not going to sit here and guess what's going to happen. Like I said, we'll just take it day to day and go from there. OK, when you look at the growth stuff, it's it had been a little bit lagging and some of it's still lagging. Like here's the IPO fund. But it's pretty much in the same boat. This is MTUM. Um, now it is kind of, again, challenging those highs today. Nice rebound after yesterday's reversal. Again, I don't like to get in the weeds. Um, but let's just see what happens. You know, I'm not saying 
don't buy anything, be all in cash. And then if we go up here and break out by 50 cents, go fully invested. I mean, there's, you know, there's shades of gray here, but you'd just like to see this continue. So far, so good, but let's just see if this hesitation leads to something more, right? Um, the IBD 50 index, same sort of thing, you know, just kind of, um, it's probably up here today, but same sort of thing where it's just kind of testing this um, key area, okay? Um, so overall, good, just, let's just see how it goes. The fact that sentiment's a little bit, um, I would say near-term complacent, you know, it's just quiet. There's not a lot of worry out there. It does make me wonder if we need a couple more, you know, shake the tree events. I don't mean, you know, down 10% in the market, just, you know, shake the tree events like yesterday to kind of get the fear level up, but we'll let the market decide. Before getting into individual stocks, just XLP, keeping an eye on it. It has pulled back here. And the one thing I would say is that this week, actually before this, I, I meant to do this first. So back to the NASDAQ real quick. This is the relative performance line versus the S&P 500. I mean, you can always look at everything relative to everything else. But the fact that you've had this kind of good um, angle of attack, for lack of a better phrase, um, I think it's at a new high. I mean, it's right there. It's right near the old highs here from January and February, to me is a good sign. Now, of course, again, the NASDAQ, NVIDIA chips, you know, it's a little bit maybe skewed by, you know, one or two or three or four names sort of thing. But it is what it is. Usually when this is going up, it's a good thing, you know, for the overall market, okay? And so this week we did see growth kind of outperform thanks to NVIDIA. And if that continues, I think that would be a good sign, not just for growth stocks, which I love, but for the market as a whole. Back to XLP, it has pulled back, looks totally normal, but I wouldn't be upset if this relative performance line kept sort of sagging a little bit because there has been a bid in some of these defensive names, you know what I mean? And just, this isn't defensive, but this is DVY, which is the um, one of the, like, a uh, dividend aristocrat fund, sort of something like that, right? Um, it's not dividend adjusted, this chart, but you can just see since the market low, it really was sort of the leader, um, not DVY itself, but that sort of sector and that group. And then we've come off pretty strongly here into the 25 day line. Again, looks totally fine. I'm, I'm using this more as a mar general market tool. Um, you know, if these things start spiking higher and the NASDAQ struggles, you know, it's just gonna be, I think a little bit more choppy and challenging. If, however, these things do okay, but the NASDAQ really powers ahead and individual stocks obviously power ahead, that's really what I'm key, one of the things I'm keying off of here starting next week and going forward, whether the buying pressures, which have been just okay so far in this rally phase since the low in April, really kick into gear. Okay, so let's get into individual stocks. There's a bunch from a bunch of different areas, same thing as before. So Eli Lilly, I've mentioned this a million times. You know, the, the relative performance line, we call it the RP line, RS line, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's a little bit shy, but the stock, it's it's been a great, it's had a huge run, and the fact that the stock could only pull back 10% during the correction and consolidate, to me, is a good sign. If you look at, um, you know, obviously it's had, like I said, it's a big run, but just very tight. I mean, you don't need to know the percentage to know that it's been very tight. And on the daily chart you've had, you know, this was a nice positive earnings reaction. We've seen some buying come in, it's not overwhelming, it's obviously, it's kind of an obvious story, but it's trying to break out on the upside. That looks pretty good. Within the chip group, you know NVIDIA and stuff, but there's been some other names. So this is onto innovation, which I'm pretty sure I've mentioned here, but it's not like the chip group itself. It's not in the first inning of its advance. It broke out back here on the weekly chart, um, but it's been kind of choppy and like I said, choppy and challenging, but really smoke up a chimney here recently. Yes, it reversed yesterday, but now it's back up. You know, these one day reversals, especially, you know, reversing, I remember in 2003, not to go on a tangent, when I was still kind of young, you know, this is first bull market. We just sat through three years of a bear market, which was like the introduction of my investing career almost. And, you know, the market took off in early 03. And I remember there was some day, I don't know when, it must've been May or June or something like this. And everything reversed hard. And I was like, oh my God, everyone's selling. But I remember, you know, talking with people and it's like, yeah, Weakness out of strength is different than just weakness out of weakness, assuming we're not talking like a 20% decline. So when you get these periodic declines, don't get me wrong, they could always mark the top, but nine times out of 10, they don't. Okay, so anyway, onto innovation, story aside, you know, broke out way back here. It looks great. It's really been unable to pull back. You see, it's kind of almost trending higher here, even while it's meeting with resistance. So it looks pretty good. You know, again, Strength has been kind of sold into, as you've seen here, in terms of you know meeting with resistance. So maybe it does shake out, but it's certainly a name I'd be watching. Um, Taiwan Semiconductor, oops, that's not right, TSM. Um, this is another one that kind of broke out a few days ago. I think this was last week, two weeks ago. 
and it's followed through nicely. Obviously, the NVIDIA effect is good, but it is what it is, okay? Volume's coming in. And what I like about this one is it's kind of, it's a bigger company. Don't get me wrong, it's not super fast, but you know, beautiful base. We've been talking about this a few times this year. It had a huge run um, for a couple months, and then it just kind of chilled out with the chip stocks. And as soon as the pressure came off the market again, so it should be in theory relatively early um, you know, in the cycle for the stock and that sort of thing. So TSM looks good. Um, just kind of random names. So software today, I would just say Workday. Uh, yeah, Workday, which is not a leader, hasn't been a leader. Um, nice company, but just not a leader. It's gapping down. So it's hitting some of the software names, but I'm just keeping an eye on um, Samsara. Uh, this is the first time I did go back and look. This is the first time the stock has kind of had a uh, persi persistent advance for more than a few days. Um, without earnings. In other words, if you go back and look, and you, I can't really show it to you on the daily, but most of the stock's progress has just been these big earnings moves, which is good, but then it tends to lose them or stall out. So this is the first time after hitting the 200-day line that it's really advanced persistently for about a month, not a lot of volume, and now it's shaking out lower. It does have earnings coming up here in early June. But to me, it's kind of like, okay, it sort of went up here, now it's shaking out like the market. Kind of hold up here, sort of round out and get going. And this is sort of the beginning of, quote unquote, a real sustained advance that can keep going for a month or two as opposed to these endless earnings gaps. OK, um, Robin Hood is still a name I'm watching. Again, you know, we're seeing a lot of this. I showed you those indexes where it kind of gets the new highs a little bit, um, looks good, has some power. I mentioned this last week. It had over the top volume on the weekly chart right here. OK, it did. So, you know, Big reversal with the meme stocks and then right back higher. Uh, the monthly update was good, so on and so forth. But, you know, then it's pulled back. So, again, it's kind of like the pullback is fine, but you want to see these things hang in. But if it does resume, it could be a nice what I call a pullback resumption pattern. And again, on sort of the steadier side of things, this is interactive brokers, um, which really kind of broke out back here, um, hit the 50 day line and now accelerating higher. Probably looking for a pullback in that one as far as I know, but who knows? The stock looks pretty good. We actually, you know, stupid me took, you know, top 10 profits somewhere back here, um, but no complaints, but the stock continues to look pretty good. Um, the retail stuff still looks pretty good. This has been volatile. This is sweet green, um, you know, a huge, huge, huge earnings move. But look at this. Uh, again, I'm recording this late Friday morning, but so far as of right now, this could be three weeks closing tight and forget about the three weeks closing tight. Just kind of looking at it. It's not tight, tight. I mean, it's moving you know, it's a four point range on a $30 stock. So it's not nothing, but you know, in relative to where we've, we've been here, it's kind of holding all the gains here, which is so far so good. And you can just see down here, no real selling coming to the stock so far. That's pretty good. And then one that's, I'm kind of doing some very aggressive and some a little bit more established here. This is Wingstop. Now, Wingstop broke out right with the market November 1st. I actually think it was, you know, November 1st or 2nd on earnings. It's had a huge run. This could be what's kind of called an ascending base right here, um, which is sort of um, usually it's a little bit later stage. I don't mean like the ninth inning, it's going to fail. I mean, it's sort of like the last thing before it can really take off. So just kind of looking at it, it's a $400 stock, but I don't know what you do with it. Do you buy it here with a tight stop? Do you wait for a breakout? I'm just pointing out that the stock is strong, number one. It's kind of forming these three legs down with three higher highs, three higher lows, which can be a good pattern if the stock and the market, you know, follow through on the upside. Um, solar stocks, it's hard not to notice them. Now, this is TAN, which is the ETF. Um, big bottom here. So there's no positive momentum here. The trend is not up. But I mean, you know, I do follow volume and it wasn't hard to see some of these names begin to pop this week. The leader certainly seems like First Solar. You can see the move this week is crazy and the volume has been crazy. Um, there's a lot of moving parts here, especially with this company, um, you know, tax incentives and tariffs and oversupply and all this stuff. But as soon as this thing went through 200, the stock's been, you know, it's up 70 points, 75 points in three days or four days or whatever it is. Full disclosure, we did say take some partial profits in here. We had it in top 10. So maybe it pulls back, but certainly should just be something that you're at least keeping an eye on because maybe the group is finally starting to kick into gear after being the uh, death for the last uh, year or two. Uh, Pinterest, you know, this is a name again, gaps up on earnings, runs to new highs, and then looks fine, but just kind of stalls out here for a couple weeks. Looks pretty good to me. Um, some kind of uh, older school, not older school, but Envent Electric, British company, um, you know, breakout here, test of the 50-day line. I love this sort of volume cluster before and after earnings. 
And then you can see it hacked around pretty good here near 80, you know, pretty volatile day to day basis. But when you look at the chart, didn't do anything wrong. Now it's extending higher. Um, GE Aerospace. So Aerospace still looks good. This one is this one is not early. OK, I'll show you the weekly chart. This is not early. <laughs> you know, it's had a nice run, but it is not like an ascending base. But I'm just noticing it's still under control. Not like a lot of selling coming in here. Nothing, no wild, you know, selling on strength or anything. And the stock has pulled back here recently to the 25 day line. Now it's pushing higher. What do you do with it? I'll leave that up to you. I'm just pointing out a strong stock in a strong sector. And last but not least, just to mention it because there was news. So this is Bitcoin, which I still think looks this is IBIT, which is basically they own Bitcoin itself. And I just still think on the weekly chart, it looks like a pretty normal consolidation. You can see how volumes dried up here in the last um, month or two, that sort of thing. So maybe it, maybe it needs time, maybe it doesn't. Of course, the news was that there's probably going to be some Ethereum. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's kind of like the number two crypto. This is sort of the um, ETF of this. I'm not recommending this or saying this is going to keep going, but just noticing the strength in crypto. And again, it's just sort of my theme, similar with something like Robinhood. If we're in a bull market and, you know, nine months from now, the S&P is up higher and money is looser and asset prices are higher and so on and so forth. Uh, sentiment is higher, long-term sentiment is higher. Then some of these sort of bull market things like crypto and bull market stocks like Robinhood could be a lot higher and be beneficiaries, okay? So back to the market, so far so good. A little bit of a wobble this week. I would say some, there's been some uh, wheat separated from the ch chaff, you know, some names not so good, lagging. Some names, you know, never really got going, got hit this week, look a little bit uglier, but for the most part, most of the market and most growth stocks still look good. It's not a buying panic. If we had another two or three days like we saw on Thursday, that could be, you know, intermediate term dangerous. And we do have a lot of stock, a lot of indexes, excuse me, like the New York Composite that came down and tested, you know, kind of key support here yesterday. So if we do see some more selling, you know, it might be time to pair back on your weakest things. We might be in sort of more of a trading range. But that it's good to be aware of those, but you don't want to like act on stuff that may or may not happen. Right now, the trends are up long term, intermediate term for the indexes and most stocks. It's not the best, you know, 1999 out there. It's not the perfect environment, but most things are making progress and doing pretty well. So we would be generally putting money to work, but of course, pick your spots carefully. OK, that's all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for listening and watching. Again, have a great long weekend and we'll be back again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.